The timeless beauty of this Suffolk coastline, its broad horizons, skies and landscapes, was a major inspiration for the music of Benjamin Britten. And it was here, in this picturesque little fishing village in the years after World War II, that he, together with his friends Peter Piers and Eric Crozier, created the first Albra Festival. That was in 1948. It was an instant success and grew into an annual meeting place for musicians from around the world. It created what Britain called the Holy Triangle of Music. The composer, performers and audience. The three elements inspiring each other to ever greater achievements. Since its acclaimed early years, the project has flourished. Today, its legacy, called Albra Productions, keeps that holy triangle vigorously alive. Its reputation is now threefold, as an outstanding performance centre, a place where top musicians and emerging musical talents come together, and as a focus for wide-ranging education and community work. It just goes from strength to strength. Back in the 1960s, the festival quickly outgrew the various halls and handsome churches where concerts are still given. It needed more space. And in 1967, a new concert hall was opened at nearby Snape. Disused industrial buildings of the former maltings were transformed. And the peculiar characteristics of the maltings' red brick helped give Snape Concert Hall one of the best acoustics in Europe. Word soon got round. In the 1970s, Albra took another momentous step. It created, also at Snape, the first residential training scheme for top young musicians. Its example has since been taken up by others, but the Britain Peers Young Artist Programme is still acknowledged as offering the UK's leading training opportunity for emerging professional musicians. Coming to the Britain Peers School for a course in 1992 uh, was very valuable um, for me uh, as a young composer because you could hear pieces played and have feedback from luminaries. And I learned a huge amount more, you know, more in that week than I learned in three years of university, probably. However, we have identified a further hidden gap in the support of our musical talent. Even the best established musicians need time to escape the pressures of being performers to recharge, to make new collaborations and try new genres. They need an environment that fires the imagination and facilities that help them realize their potential. This is as true for groups and ensemble as it is for soloists. This country produces some of the finest musicians in the world, yet we do almost nothing to nurture the talent we have. To fill this gap, in 2003, Albra residences were launched offering bespoke professional development opportunities to top international artists. The residences typically last from a few days to a week of concentrated work, often culminating in work-in-progress showcases or performances. No other centres in Europe offer such opportunities year-round. I've been able to participate in a couple of residencies here um, and these have made a tremendous impact. You suddenly come to Albra, you come to the school, to Snape, and suddenly your whole artistic mind frees up. Generally, it's difficult to rehearse things in a concentrated atmosphere. You always have to go on to another performance, to do this, to do that. If you're free of all the stresses that you would normally have, you can do more work, you can concentrate more. It's very inspiring to just even just get away from busy, noisy, polluted city life and have absolutely no distractions. The way that Albra brings together musicians with artists of all kinds, not just writers but visual artists and dancers, is far more than collaboration. It's a kind of conversation and I've found my encounters here to be utterly illuminating. 